Good evening, televiewers. Uh, good evening. Uh, we are happy to have you once again this evening. Uh, follow what we have uh, in store for you. And uh, today we are going to be asking what future for Cameroonians as uh, President Bia addresses uh, them this uh, evening. The President is going to be talking to Cameroonian youth uh, by 8 uh, p.m. Uh, this evening we are going to follow uh, the the address to the youth uh, alongside uh, you people because we're going to uh, also broadcast it uh, live as he speaks uh, to the nation. We are going to be looking at uh, what the youth of uh, Cameroon is going through uh, uh, from uh, different perspectives. Uh, we are going to analyze uh, the address after uh, he, after the speech, uh, with our panelists who already are seated in the house, uh, we are in the company of uh, Apostle Lambi Valentine Gua, who is uh, going to be telling us uh, what sense he is going to be making from uh, the president's speech and also anticipating possible areas that are going to be touched uh, by the president. Good evening and welcome. Good evening, Mr. Liu. Good evening, my co panelists. Good evening, Cameroonians and viewers of Prime Hour. It's always a joy to be here to discuss very important issues. Youth Day is very close and the President is here to address the nation. And we are here to give an analysis on the speech of the President and to see how the youths of Cameroon can better upgrade the standards of their living because groups carry a greater population of Cameroon's population. And we are trusting God that the head of state speech will carry the youth to another dimension in life. Thank you. Okay, we also are in the company of Tamai Chavis, who is a youth, and um, he will be giving us his perspective and expectations. Uh, good evening, uh, Tamai Chavis, and welcome. Good evening, Mr. Leo. Good evening to the Bishop of Boya, His Lordship uh, Michael Bibi. Uh, good evening to President Bia, who will be talking to us in a couple of minutes or so. Good evening to um, Chairman John Fundi. Good evening to Maurice Camto, Senior Barrister Asher of the Reform Party. And uh, equally, good evening to Prince Ekoso of his own party. And uh, good evening to all political leaders who will be glued today to follow the head of state speech. It's often a tradition that um, days like these will always have rival speeches from different stakeholders and different political figures. So as the head of state will be talking to us, uh, we, too, we are equally expecting to get um, some reactions from other political leaders, and especially businessmen and women who are doing business during these difficult times. I want to say good evening to them, and good evening to the people of North and Southwest region, who for once will not be observing a ghost town. Thank God that um, event, uh, because of COVID-19, we are witnessing a kind of halt of celebration, so at least the people of North and Southwest region will be spared this time around. Okay. We are, I'll start with you, Apostle and B. Valentine. And why special greetings to all of you watching us uh, from Souza, not far from, uh, not far from uh, Douala. Um, I met uh, some very nice guys this, this afternoon in Souza, uh, a beautiful place. <laughs> and I'm sending special greetings to them. Yes, uh, what are your expectations uh, from the address uh, this evening to the youth? Well, uh, you know, it's a tradition. The set of state normally addresses the youth on the 10th of every January, every February, sorry, in this country. And uh, one of the challenges we have with the head of state speech is not the presentation of the speech, neither is it um, the strategies on how to upgrade the standard of the youth in the country. The problem is that the promises are never and ever fulfilled. These are promises that have been made severally in, on many different occasions, uh, many years in this country, and the stories of the youths keep remaining the same. But we are trusting God that uh, this time around, considering the situation on ground and the challenges the youths are going, you must understand, Mr. Liu, that a greater number of Cameroon's population are made of youths, if not about 70%. And uh, since our population is pro uh, 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 probably um, uh, uh, completely uh, made of youths, as I can put it, 70%, it is very, very challenging to realize that the children who are supposed to be the ones carrying out the responsibilities of the country are left behind. And this is a very serious challenge. Uh, we were told when we were growing up that the youths of today are leaders of tomorrow. We have grown to see that tomorrow and we have not become the leaders because it's very challenging to see that most of the personalities that runs 
specific responsibilities in this country are men who are practically running out of life from the general assembly national assembly to the senate to the presidency to most ministerial offices in the country it's really a serious challenge my concern is that the president in question came into office as a youth and he has worked as a youth from his youthful stage to where he is right now i don't know if he's not willing to pay back to the youth the gesture that was shown him so many years ago i think it's time he goes into his archives and check probably where he missed it because i'm sure he was brought into this particular government as a um, member of the civil cabinet of the, of the, the prime ministry as a youth and he's been seven since then and all the other ministers who are still in power came to power when they were very very much young now if they are still occupying those responsibilities till now what do they expect the youth of today to become tomorrow because it's obvious that he has worked for so many years uh, many somebody who has worked for almost about uh, 30 for 50 years in the government and is not yet established or has not gotten what he or she is looking for i'm wondering what they are going to get in the last few years of their lives so this time around the president should give us a miracle and surprise us by telling us how he came into power and how he has changed his modus operandi to bring youths to a place of responsibility okay um where, where what is the place of uh, the youth when you look at uh, the political cultural socio economic uh, setup of cameroon do you think that um, the youth are, are aptly uh, occupying the position that um, uh, should be theirs i think um if we look at it from cameroon's perspective the youth are not occupying the positions that they should mm -hmm. um they are not giving or they have not taken it upon themselves to seize the opportunity remember that most often in africa opportunities are not given the youth seize the opportunity uh, to look at the economy political social and developmental aspect of the nation the youth have actually in cameroon they have taken um full control of their social life so they are socialized without looking at the economic side of it. Remember that um, if you look at the aspect that you can see the youth in Cameroon being highly engaged and highly active in the domain of social life. And in terms of the kind of beer they drink, go to beer parlors, uh, go to nightclubs, go to events that are being organized. That's where most of us Cameroonian youth will exhibit our strength. But when it comes to political issues, um, sometimes we don't tend to focus our mind towards the political issues and equally when it comes to the level of economy we tend to uh want to rely on the government that oh it's the government that is supposed to do this and that's supposed to do that yes the government has a responsibility to implement policies that the youth will follow but these policies are not forthcoming based on the nature of the government we have i will not want to say they are not doing enough they are doing enough but there are enough to some extent is not good enough because if we expect that uh, a government like this who creates what we call a scheme for workers, that scheme for youth in such a way that youth in, 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 in northwest region, youth in southwest region, youth in littoral region should have a scheme that they can go there and get fundings. Now the financial loan policy in Cameroon is not favorable to youth who may want to engage in developmental projects or youth who may have a kind of a vision or business ideas. Sometimes you see uh, uh, the, the way to get loans in Cameroon, they are not there. Now the government should need to create loan loan possibilities for youth what are these loan possibilities the loan possibilities therefore means that we know that it's difficult for private banks to offer loans for youth but the government as in other governments or other states we have like in u.s this will happen you can take a loan and you go to school and finish school and pay back your loan you can take a loan to open up a business and you when you have that business you pay back to the state so to me the state like cameroon needs to look at schemes or uh, schemes that will incorporate youth who may want to uh, engage in business ideas and above all uh, uh, looking at the, the the economy again mr Liu, i will tell you that the dual nationality issue is killing cameroonian youth because majority of the cameroonian youth who we see see don't see opportunity in cameroon they go out there and get the opportunity with the mindset of coming back to invest in their country but because of this dual nationality difficulties where they say okay we don't accept dual nationality it, it limits some of these youth who are out there who have that resources to okay. come and invest in cameroon uh, we need to you take uh, amazi out there in south africa uh mil 
Brick uh, Spencer, good evening to you. Uh, Sun State, Sun State State, uh, good evening to you. And uh, Deep Dambe Ebot, and uh, to you, Lisa Enon Deep, uh, Don Sheriff, uh, good evening to all of you guys are watching us uh, via social uh, media. We've just been joined by Dr. Nick uh, Nguanyam. Good evening and welcome. Oh, thank you very much. Sorry, I came late. I was held up in traffic. Looking forward uh, to a great. Uh, Address by the head of state. Um, something should be done with uh, Dr. Nick's uh, camera. They should add light to that camera. I think a light needs to be added. Yes, uh, you are looking forward to a great um, address by the President of the Republic. Today. Oh yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. I do. It's uh, well, when he speaks, we'll be able to know exactly what he had in mind. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was listening to Javi speak. Um, the youths have lots of problems in this country. Okay. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, the youths are a timed bomb. And uh, I would say that for 60 years, the, the youths have not been well catered for. And you've heard me say it time and again. Um, you know, I was, li I was listening keenly to what uh, uh, Javis was saying. And if you've been following my, my, my social media yeah. uh, uh, the platforms, you will realize I keep talking about capacity, capacity, capacity. And our youth don't really have the capacity to produce. A few of them do have. And of course, they have problems of getting money, for, money for, to do this and that. But those are subjects that are well handled under entrepreneurship. But these things are not, are not, are not, are not really taught. Uh, in our schools, so the children don't really have the capacities. In reality, if we we could carry out an experiment where we go out now and take all our youth who have left universities, we give all of them 10 million, 10 million francs each, very few of them would, 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 would succeed because the capacity is lacking. And you know there have been, 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 been structures in place like PRC and some other ones. It's true that the money they give is very little, but um, the experiment has shown that very few of them succeed and very few of them pay back. So there's a lot that goes on in there. And at the end of the day, it boils down to the fact that the capacities are not as good as they ought to be for the youths. When you say it's a time bomb, well, what do you mean by that? Well, you see. Waiting to explode? Yeah. Waiting to explode. When, when, when you see what is happening in, in, in the northwest and southwest region, Though it falls under the the, uh, the the umbrella of the anglophone problem, but but in reality, it 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 is an expression of um, of uneasiness amongst a people, amongst the youth. And if you were to listen keenly and go beyond what looks like the political uh, political issues that are being stated, you would understand what is going on. If you kept asking the question why why why, and you rolled it back, at the end of the day, you end up at the foot of the youths to say that. You know, the youths can't find their feet on the ground. They can't they can fend for themselves. They can't fend for their parents. As long as the economy is bad, as long as the economy is bad, it doesn't matter whether you're the on the moon, whether you're in America, in, Rom in Romania, as long as the, that's the under underlying thing. As long as the economy is bad, for most people, there will be violence, there will be trouble. That's mm -hmm. the bottom line. Okay, economy. Um... <laughs> Apostle Lambe, I don't know whether you see the youth as a, a time bomb. You work with them um, for in church. You are holding conferences across Cameroon. You are in Balmayo. You are almost everywhere talking to young people. Uh, you think that something needs to be done to to avoid the explosion, imminent explosion, as described as a time bomb. Uh, Mr. Leo, I want to go straight to the point to say that our youth in Cameroon do not lack knowledge. Mm -hmm. What they lack is possibilities. What they lack is the necessary machineries to make their ideas work. Mm -hmm. For instance, a young man was found in Kumbu trying to build a helicopter. Unfortunately, the young man did not have but the materials in question. So you will not tell me that ideas are lacking. Ideas are always available in Cameroon. But the truth is every nation sponsors great ideas. Mark Zuckerberg will not be Mark Zuckerberg if American Bank did not borrow him two million dollars without any charges. That is one thing you have to understand. The American Bank gave Mark Zuckerberg two million dollars to carry on with Facebook. It was a great initiative. It was a great idea. A young man in Cameroon discovered a drone and that thing fizzled into the air and nobody knows where it is today. 
as I talk to you right now, you had a program here with some young men that came with a particular product during the COVID-19. Sanitizer. Sanitizer. Yes, on sanitizer. How to, now that thing was published on a platform like this the foreign <coughs> government saw, as i'm talking to you right now they are seeing me they equally saw that particular program and they gave a deaf ear to it people are coming back nice farming in cameroon i saw a young guy recently producing palm what we call palm de france it was agriculturally debunked that it was not possible for palm de france to grow in cameroon but somebody has proven that thing to be wrong and he is now cultivating it in the northern and southwest. That is something we import in this country for millions of francs here. It will shock you that Cameroon brings in onion out of this country for four billion francs per annum. Cameroon that cultivates uh, 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 onion at Tibati at uh, the Mayo Danai region, and Mayo South of Asava, Mayo Sanaga, Mayo Re, uh, Faro Edo. Those areas cultivate onion, yet we still import onion four billion. France CFA per annum in this country is to tell you that we do not lack the resources, we don't lack the mental capacity, we don't even lack the climatic condition, we lack the sponsorship. I can guarantee you with all sincerity, most countries that are advanced in the world have been able to buy into the idea of people come with creative idea and invest into it. You and I know that ideas without capital can never and ever materialize to anything. So I think if a government is uh, 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 wants to build the capacity of the youth, we are not looking for employment. We have grown past that age of going to school to come and start looking for jobs. We've beaten that record. Because if you can tell with all sincerity, most Cameroonians right now do not have the employment mentality anymore. You don't see children jumping and writing concours, looking for jobs here and there. Everybody is falling back into their own abilities and creative skills to start developing what is inside of them. But when those things are very, very young and unable to be sponsored with huge sums of money to do wide-scale production, it affects the growth of the community. So the third of states should rather stop giving us scholarship to go and learn theories. The things for the theory should be kept aside. Money should be... You see, there is a year... A nation grows mentally and there is a year a nation grows practically the industrial revolution in Europe did not start as industrial revolution it was a mental evolution that became a revolution and I think that Cameroon by virtue of the information we have gathered within the country and out of the country and I'll tell Mr. Liu there is no reading generation in Cameroon as compared to what we have right now there are no, there is no generation in Cameroon that organizes conferences to make men become financially independent and not depend on government as it used to be. Mm. This age is the most challenging age in Cameroon. And I think Cameroon has begun to come to the consciousness that they are not supposed to be graduating from universities and looking for jobs. But the issue is even when they struggle to create the little they struggle. Are they equipped the, for the jobs? They are. Are they, they fully are they fully qualified for the jobs? They are. Okay, I, don't, I don't know. That. He is a trainer. He no, is a trainer. They, I don't know they, uh, whether they, he um, buys what we are saying. Yes. They, um, let's 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 get a couple of things into perspective. Mm -hmm. When you when we talk about when we talk it's mostly about statistics, mm -hmm. okay? What we are saying is take a thousand take a thousand children randomly or from our universities that have graduated from our universities or let me wind back let's just say our children are just growing wild they are doing like they're doing that in the northwest and southwest without even going to school mm. after some time even though they did not go to school you are going to see some children amongst them who are very intelligent who have taught themselves and who can make things happen mm. are you are you getting what i'm saying but it's a question of numbers just because one two children you know, try to build a, an helicopter or try to do this, 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 does not, does not tell the full picture. When you have, when you reach a critical mass, let's say you have a hundred children and, and 60 of them are very creative, very responsible and, and what have you, and can make things happen, you are talking. But if you are, if you are going to have 2,000 children and then one or two of them are creative, there's a problem. What we are saying is, yes, they have, been, they have gone to school, they have the creative energy, but we are saying that they have not been, you know, we need to mold them even better. We need to give them better possibilities so that once you give them the capital and then you, you help them, they grow. We have to realize that even in the best hands, when people create new jobs, when new, when, when new, when new things are created in terms of job, you know, jobs, or how do I put it? Um, enterprises and so on, 80% of them collapse. 80% of, of, of new everything that is newly created collapses. Collapse, rather. 
So how do you encourage people so that even when they collapse, they can still rise again and carry on? That is the question. That is the question. I'm sitting here. When I started doing business, I have to tell you that I borrowed 250 million francs from NFC Bank and I lost it. And it took me a, 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 hell, a hell of trouble to be able to pay that money back. But the bottom line is when you fall, what, 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 what happens? You have to rise again. It's very difficult for, 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 for someone to just give you money. Like we're talking about money in America. America has the money and they're 400 years old. You know, the, 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 the money, the American government doesn't give out money. It's just that, you know, things have evolved to the point where their banks, their banks are more understanding and they study you and they, they can follow you up and they, they know what you are doing. And then they know that if you do this, this is what will happen. We don't have that, um, that money here. But for any child who is very hardworking and knows what to do and you have learned your entrepreneurship, the bottom line is start small and grow. Okay. Start small and grow. Okay, uh, Tata Peter, good evening to you. Good evening, Mr. Leo. This is Tata Peter from Young. I think that when these old people working in government today did not have the capacity when they were ta taking over power, as Dr. Nick said. So I suggest, uh, okay, um, okay. Uh, Emos Angri, good evening to you. Sisiko, Oscar, good evening to you. Eddie Francis Angole, and to you, Tabang Enta, good evening to you. Um, some people, like he's saying, he's talking about capacities. But uh, when you look at Thomas Sankara, uh, uh, Paul Biahijo, and the rest, uh, they, took, they took over responsibilities pretty early. Where did their capacities come from? <laughs> what, what, yes. I know the microphone has to go, but let me just answer a couple of things. I'm answering this question in, in relation to what the gentleman just asked. Mm. Before we even get lost, let me try to, 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 to resituate all of us mm. that. When we are talking about jobs, 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 many people are looking at civil service jobs. Mm -hmm. That is not the place to look. The, the place to look for jobs, I mean, in, currently, is the private it's in the private sector. Mm -hmm. Because the civil service has only 300,000 people, and in Cameroon, it's already bloated. And when you are talking about Bob, you have some, <coughs> all those things, I mean, they are all the civil service. And, what, and the question is, how are we going to empower our youths to create jobs and to be productive in the private sector? That is the question. Okay. Um, yes, the question initially was for you. Yeah, um, if you look at the educational policies of Cameroon, and especially the private institution, you see that entrepreneurship came to Cameroon, the, the concept itself came to Cameroon uh, 10 years ago, that we started hearing of uh, universities changing their mindset from normal universities to entrepreneurial universities for professionals, professionals the, the, all the, the, so it, it, it mm. 10 years it started from mm. 10 years ago mm -hmm. so if we are looking at this concept it started because they saw that Cameroonians were too uh, magical oriented Cameroonians were too magical syndrome oriented in such a way that we felt like jobs were more of the Private civil, uh, uh, civil sector than the private sector. Now, universities changed their curriculum, but this was still a difficulty from the Ministry of Higher Education, who could not permit these private universities to actually have a free hand of bringing in policies or bringing in uh, of, uh, uh, programs that will enhance the skills of Cameroon. I totally agree with. Uh, Dr. Nick, in terms of the capacity, yes, we have the technical ability to think, but we don't have the capacity to handle. Remember that as an entrepreneur or as entrepreneur, what you need is not just that, 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 that um, ability you think, but is that skills, and that skills come with attitude, that attitude come with resistance, that resistance come with tolerance, that tolerance come with patience. And as entrepreneurs, you are taught of all these sectors. Now, when you look at Cameroon as a whole, where we are now and why uh, 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 um, Apostle Ambe feel that now we are having a, that we are in a generation that is highly educated is thanks to the concept of entrepreneurship that was introduced 10 years ago and this takes process to build and we are gradually still learning about entrepreneurship and state universities are still uh, in a slow pace taking entrepreneurship. Now in terms of us getting the skills we need we need the government to to, 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 to create a free hand in such a way that private universities can take upon themselves to create projects that can directly impact their community, that can directly impact these young men and women to have the skills. Mr. Ayo, for example, no private university in Cameroon have 
the authority to grant degree. The state universities are the degree granting body, and they now, being the degree granting body, they have their own policies that each subject must follow. I hear people talking about um, that we must take agriculture effectively, we must take this effectively. Yes, we have to take this effectively, but what is it? How do you take it effectively if state university or state has a policy that limits you to exploit uh, to expire tentacles? We have young people in Boya, Mr. Yu, I will tell you, who have never gone to school, they have studied online. And the technology they have in their brain is mind blowing. It's far better than the professors that we have who have studied in classroom. But we believe in Cameroon, for you to become a professional, you must go to school 24 7 and you must not study online. We look at online study as waste. We look at, we don't even build incubators uh, programs. How many of our universities handle boot camps? Few universities handle boot camp. Boot camp is when you bring university students together, you put them in a particular uh, sector. And and what I'm saying is that the fact the policies we incorporate in our universities will help to boost the future of the youth or to help... Are you saying that the universities are not doing enough? They are not doing enough. We have entrepreneurial No, no. We have Yo, how entrepreneurial we have, uh, are these universities? You have uh, universities that are doing holistic scientific is scholarly. What we are saying yeah, is that they, they are doing something but mm. not enough based on government policies. Mm. Now, equally, even at the level... Why, 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 why do you think it's based on the government uh, policy? You say the government universities have failed now we have private yes Mr. Leo, Mr. Leo, which, yes this is it each university has what we call a mental uni private university has what we call a mental university mm. which is the degree granting body mm. for example the degree granting body of Kaliku university is university of boya mm. for himad they have university of bamenda and part of university of boya for some maybe that postgraduate programs mm. now these degree granting bodies have the criteria that they, they operate which they give you before you have found what you can in learning are you saying that if, say, uh, Catholic University, uh, Himats, and other universities, that they, 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 they equip you very well with skills and knowledge, and then the mental university only comes to vet uh, exams and the like, what is the place of the exams uh, uh, in the skills and knowledge acquired already? Because what this, the, the, the universities actually do is just uh, to provide you with the... With the with a, with a, with a degree. Mr. Yeah. I don't know how it but happens to other universities. Yeah, but the problem but is, let me give you a if, practical if, example. If you are, if you are equipped with wonderful skills and knowledge, how does a state university prevent you from exploring? A while ago, I said. A while ago, I said this concept of entrepreneurship was introduced ten years ago, yeah. and I'm telling you now, vetting is not only done at the level of exams. Are they teaching? No, that is not only done at level exams. Mm -hmm. Vetting is done at level of recruitment. Equally, when you recruit, a mental university has to look at the capacity of lecturers they are recruiting. And sometimes they expect you to take a seat, a seat, a lecturer who have been within the, the rank of studying from since God called Abraham to come and lecture that is a, an industry professional I don't know. who have the skills. Yeah, yeah. He, he may uh, disagree, but I have facts on no, that. He, yeah. Apostle Ambe, I know that you are supposed to have the microphone, but this is a very hot topic here. Since it's my domain, let me just answer to it before we confuse our listeners. Mm. Please listen to me. I own a school and I've been with the Ministry of Higher Education since the time it was created, long before the Catholic University was created. Listen, in all fairness, the Ministry of Higher Education and Professor Famen Dongo have been trying their best, have been trying their best to make sure that the private higher education succeeds, to make sure that the products from these schools are worth their, their salt. And I have been in those meetings starting sometime in 19, uh, I can't remember, but very early. But in 2002, I started the St. Louis in Bamenda. And I have been with the ministry all this while. And just just three years ago, or is it four years ago, there has been a revision of the programs that are taught in these private higher institutions. When we started, there were just a handful of those schools, probably 20, but today there are, there, there are about 250. And the Ministry of, the Ministry of Higher Education, especially Professor, Professor um, mm -hmm. Famen Dongo, he gives authorizations just like he will share bread. Why? Because the government is really trying to help people to create jobs. But this is the problem. When the private higher uni uh, university concept was started, 
A lot of the people who were teaching in those universities were borrowed from the state universities. And they were, when they came to these private universities, they carried their bad habits from the, the, the state universities and brought them to the private universities and were teaching exactly and the same kind of type, type of things and the same style in the, in, in the private universities. In what way was the private university supposed to be different from what is happening in the state university? It's supposed to be professional. That means knowledge and skills. So, but the ministry and, the, and everyone else realized that most of the children who are graduating from these, these places, they were going around again with, with fires looking for jobs. And therefore, there was need for programs to be revised and that has just been done. And then when you go critically to look at it again, let's just go and take all the schools and see what they are doing. You will see that many children, just like in the University of Boya and, 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 uh, and uh, National Polytechnic Bamboo and many others, they are going into, into the social sciences, management, business, marketing and financing, and these, and these things. And this is, this is the thing. I have interviewed some of those children and I've tried to, in, to, 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 to employ some of the children who have banking and finance and, and, and what have you. You cannot, especially Anglophones, you cannot be studying banking and finance and yet you don't know how money is made. That's the problem. So we still have a lot of children who are not really putting their fingers in the mud. And, then, and, and you think that you just go through the university and, it, uh, and, and that's what it is. I'm battling with the children over there to, to, to learn the agriculture. I'm battling with the teachers to teach them the right agriculture. And, and, uh, and in as much as you will find someone who has a, a, a degree or a master's or a PhD in agriculture and has gone through our universities, most of the time the practical part of it has not been, been, be, be, been the best. And you will find out that Understanding how things work is still lacking. So what we really need to do is to, is to push our children to bend their backs and do what is right. And a lot of children, again, even when they come to the private university, they just want to, they just want to cheat and end up with a certificate. Uh, Javis was talking about, about a problem saying that the government does not allow the private universities to offer degrees. Now let me say something. I own a private university. And even if you made me Minister of Higher Education today, I will not give any private university the, the authorization to, to make its own, to, to give its own decrees. Why so? Because there's still a lot of corruption in our nation. And there is this thing of, um, of, um, of uh, the, the, what, what do we call it again? Because even right now, as I speak, you know, handling exams is a lot of difficulties. And I know what I'm talking about. We have to go for the right things until we break this thing of certificates. Many people will always be going for certificates and the ministry has not stopped anybody from carrying on any, any even if you want to build aeroplanes they will give you the authorization to build aeroplanes so don't say that the minister stopped you from doing what was right okay, it's not true um, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Apostle <laughs> Ambe, we are talking about how economically uh, very broke our young people are but one of the very um, successful sectors in our economy, especially in the north west south west and Yang, in Douala here, we see Bonamusadi, is the sector of uh, the brewery sector, eh? uh, we, with the offshoots of snacks almost everywhere. The majority of the customers are young people. This is capital now. Why do we invest it more on, 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 on on merry making rather than thinking on how to invest and make more money. If I will answer your question, I want to correct a few things from Dr. Nick. Okay. Dr. Nick talked about numbers. I don't know how many Max Zuckerberg did America have to invest in him. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many Jeff Bezos who has Amazon did America have to invest in him. I don't know how many Colonel Sanders who started Kentucky Fried Chicken. I don't know how many of them did America have before investing in him. The list is so long. The challenge is this. We are trying to ask the government to invest in certificates rather than investing in skills. The man that started Kawasaki Suzuki did not go to school. He's a Japanese. This ideology of thinking that they must invest in you because you passed through a higher institution it's a big error. There are people in Nigeria who are producing bikes from local mentality from garages that they gathered. 
when we talk about investing in the skills of people the government should look around the nation if they start challenging people or investing in the ones who have come up with a little idea it will provoke everybody we are not asking government to throw money here about we are not asking government to scatter money everywhere we are asking government to provoke the talent in youth by trying to invest in what is already available i told somebody that if those guys who are at the Disney arrow center were supposed to be used as a bait to trap those who are in the bushes then they were supposed to have given them first class treatment as a means to convince the others in the bush that there is more life in town than in the bushes rather unfortunate these guys who are in town do not even have food to eat that there is somebody in the bush who can kidnap in one day and have 10 million how do you expect the people in town to stand as a trailblazer a pace setter and a pathfinder to those who are in the bushes I come back to let us understand that the Ella will start looking for people who are in this nation who are doing credible things with the skill and talent in them and bundle all these certificates and degrees and put at one corner it will not go very far most of the inventors in Europe and America I will guarantee you they didn't go to high school in university <coughs> education the mistake we have in Africa is this they ascertain the intelligence of a man based on the grammar he speaks. First and foremost, English is a borrowed language. And to anyone who thinks that by speaking good English, you are intelligent, you are in error. Because the Chinese don't know English. The Japanese don't know English. Some of the Russians don't know English. English is not a measuring rod for intelligence. People should get down to the skills of men. Those who are making an attempt in this country in creating things government can pick two or three persons and challenge every other person that if you are rigmaroling the streets of cameroon with a certificate in your hand look at a man who does not have a certificate it has attracted the attention of the government that is what we are talking here now to cause a revolution in any field in life is to take a few persons who have attempted to come out with something in that area and then cause them to explode it is but certain that if in a classroom the government is giving 15 million for you that comes out first everybody will want to study to come out first if the government can put 15 million for a guy who was able to grow palm de france in cameroon that has it was naturally agriculturally debunked that it could not grow here and then somebody sat down with the initiative then the government should invest in that thing it will cause cameroonians to start thinking that all other crops out of the country that people think they cannot grow here they will start searching for the climatic condition in this country to create those things the few persons that have been able to come out with something why did government not cause the guy who produced a drone in cameroon to become a talk about in the nation it would have provoked every other cameroonian to start thinking that if this guy could provoke or produce a drone and government invested in him let me think of producing a bike somebody said i'll produce a kk another will produce a car that's what provokes the inner in in the, 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 the lantern capacity of the human spirit to start produce far beyond all these accumulated notes. I define education as accumulated information, repeatedly told without any innovation. That is my definition of education in this country. We went to school, what we read our children are reading. It tells you that every mind is on the same spot. And the industrial revolution that took place in Europe, before they came here, there was no academic prowess. It was humans that sat down in their labs and different places and began attempting things. Cameroonians do not attempt. Africans do not attempt. They are so consumed with the idea of going to follow a particular rhythm of education and come and express themselves. I want to say this uh, without any fear of or disrespect. I don't value your intelligence because you speak good grammar. Grammar or English language is not the measuring rod for intelligence. And that is the deception we have in Cameroon. That when you come back and you are able to speak phonetically, and you are able to put tenses in order, that means you are intelligent. There is a garage boy who say, I went to, that he can produce a bike. Those are the people we are looking for in this country. We are tired of stories. Mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Yo, um, yeah, yeah. I just want I just had a brief uh, interjection of what Dr. said. I'm not disagreeing with what he talked in about, but being in the higher educational sector as a staff, I've observed what is happening there. I will tell you, quoting from doctor, that we have people doing marketing and the rest and the rest and the rest um, who probably cannot run a business. It's simply obvious because recruitment is still vetting. Mentor university vet will recruit. 
Mr. Leo, you who have done journalism practically for 15 years, state university policy will not give you the ability to take some courses without having a master's or PhD or something to do. So now someone who has practiced for six years, who have this practical knowledge, you can bring someone who has practiced to handle the practical knowledge and someone who has the theoretical knowledge to set the exam. But that's not what happens. What happens is that before lecturers are recruited, they are recruited based on a certain level of criteria in Cameroon. But when you come go across the other side of other countries, they are recruited, lecturers are recruited in two phases, the practical phase and the theoretical phase. The practical phase are those who are winners who have practiced. Look at those teaching MBAs. Who, who vetted, who vetted your recruitment? No, I am not a, a lecturer. I who am a staff. Your recruitment? I am a staff. This is an employer. Who vets your no, recruitment? Yo, yo, I am a staff. I am who not vet, a lecturer. Yeah, I, you are talking. You are talking. This is an employer in higher education. Who vets your recruitment? No, I mean, he's saying things I'm learning from him. Because yo, I am telling you from a practical basis, University of Boya vet who you recruit as a private if they are mentoring you. Said, Maybe said, Dr. Mesmer will be talking from I said, his own perspective. I said, I said, I said, no, wait, wait, I said, wait, 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 wait. I've seen, I've seen, <laughs> I, uh, the, the owner of, uh, of uh, Himat is my friend. I've not seen how, it, I see the way he does his recruitment. I don't know whether he vets, but this is an employer in higher education. He is telling you that nobody vets and you are saying, Yo, whether you like it or not, I am telling you, when you go to give your exams to be vetted, the actual fight, there was a point in time when University of Boya came to our school. Look at all the, those who have been recruited. And, Yo, I am, I what you are saying, you no, wait, you wait, know, wait, wait. see, whether you like it or not, they, I'm telling you from a practical basis, and I can be quoted anywhere. So, that's, this, what we are discussing right now is practically a distraction to this particular Yes. No, I'm just saying that. No, no, no. no, 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 We are talking about the future Honestly. of youth, and you are talking about no. vetting of our no, recruitment. No, no. Yeah, the future of youth. How many youth pass? How many youth pass? How many youth pass? Okay. How many youth pass through university? No. We have thousands of youth. No, yeah, but he, he, is a, he is an employer. He is telling you that nobody vets. And you I am telling you that people vet you, because I have seen. Wait, wait, a, minute, wait a minute. Wait do a minute. Do you employ? I, I employ. I don't know what he's even talking about. I employ, so I don't <laughs> even know what you're talking about. You are a staff, so you don't. Anybody know, should I, disagree with me. Who I, I, honestly, I, disagree. I don't know what you're talking about. We are all vet. I mean, the University of Boya supervises me just like he supervises the Catholic University, and this is the point. The University of Boya does not tell you whether you should or whether you should employ a tall or a yellow person. Employ someone who is qualified. Employ and try. Criteria. Mm -hmm. But, but if you are not qualified, yeah, I'm talking about the standard. Of course, if you are not qualified, so I'm talking about the standard. So you are mixing here. I'm talking about the standard. standard. If you are in, if, 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 if you are fit to teach, you are fit to teach. M point three. So what no, do we no, be doing? No, 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 no. That's why Cameroon is where we are today. Based are on the standard. Uh, uh, um, no, I don't know what you're you saying. Are you saying? Are you saying? Are you saying? Tell my job is that if we are to recruit to work for my media prime. We should not set criteria for. Mr. Alio, we are asking the question why Cameroon is the way it is because of the educational side, the method of recruitment from private universities being mentored by state universities that has a criteria to recruit you, uh, lecturers based on what has been and what should be. I use a common example. A journalist who has practiced for 10 years cannot be allowed to teach a, a practical course in the University of Bay and set an exam, a university and set an exam without having a master's degree. That's, that's, that's clear. So you would prefer to take someone who comes from school with a master's degree who has just been there for two years, first degree, you go directly and have a master's degree to teach what in the university. Your point? So what my is, point is that, point is so, yeah, this is my point. My yeah. point is that we should start looking for those who have been professionals working on the field to handle practical courses for our students, our young men how in the university. Teach, how do they teach the, the students? I have said it, and doctor said there's a criteria. I don't know about the criteria. I, I just use a common example that someone with a fresh graduate with an MSc with someone with 10 years of working experience, those are two different people. Excuse, can I, can I say something? Can I say something? Finally, I, it's like... <laughs> yeah, let me, let me say something. Mm -hmm. I'll first start off by, by, by agreeing with, uh, with the expose that uh, um, uh, Apostle Ambe made, yeah. okay? It's um, just that when you say quite a lot in a, in a very short you know, you, you, in, a, in a very short while, you cannot express all all parts of it. What he was saying, it's a practical approach to what we should be doing, and what we are agreed on on this pla on this platform is that 
certificates and your theory and your set uh, and and your PhDs does not does not necessarily mean that you are you, you have the practical skills and if this this if this if this argument is heating up what all we are saying is that as you as you are working to have your masters it should be backed up by practical skills that's what we are saying and then we are saying also that there are a lot of people out there who who can make things happen who don't have those certificates and i think the there is um, there is there's some mechanism being that is being put in mm -hmm. in place to see how those those people can be given a certificate so that you know where to fit them it's mm -hmm. very important and even as we speak when 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 you go to when you go to when you go to the schools even like like mine or or anywhere it does you have you have people with those certificates that are teaching but you have the other people who don't have those certificates, but who have the practical skills, who are showing the children what it is. Even when you train as a medical doctor, when you train as a medical doctor, you, 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 want, to learn, you want to know nursing, you go to the hospital and the, and, and, and the nurse is there. They are not doctors, they are not professors. They teach you what nursing practice is all about. So it's not about, uh, let's, let's stop all this uh, wrangling over nothing. Okay. Um, <laughs> yes, um, youths, she says youths are a time bomb but have youths have been given opportunity because when you look across the board our our leadership in cameroon today uh, dr nick you agree with me that uh, from the president uh, to the president of the senate uh, president of national assembly almost everybody is uh, very old is it that is it uh, that uh, the youth are not um, responsible enough have they not shown a proof of responsibility or oh, why uh, we still uh, having almost uh, very old, old, old people leading us at um, almost every level. Let's say that the nation is going through a transition phase, mm. and uh, and like the, like you say, you don't put new wine in old wine skins. And what we are seeing now, you will not see it again. Okay. Yeah. So we are going through a transitional phase, and that will become. Uh, history. You think so too? Uh, no, I feel the the government totally have neglected the youth as far as leadership position is concerned in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the the, 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 the key positions of the government, uh, very few persons are at a certain 40 or 50 occupy some key positions. The reason is probably uh, maybe because they will feel like they are not up to standard. But I see this is more of um, what we call an investor kind of standard, which is operating in Cameroon, where people of certain age appoint the people they have been used to as they are growing, they have been used to, and that's how it moves. If you look at around the circle, uh, even the appointment, ministers are rotated from Minister of Transport to Minister of this, Minister of that, Minister of that. And at the end of the day, they keep rigmaroling within the sector. So it's kind of more of a, a what we call uh, an, an entitlement, like you're entitled to, 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 to the, the elderly are entitled to the position. But to me, I think we should go beyond that. The, the, we should set policies that will say, okay, if you are running for this position, yeah, 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 deputy to have it to be to be a youth of set of this age if you are running for this position your deputy should be a youth of this age i think it will go a long way and it, it, a typical example is ministerial appointment look at the ministerial list in cameroon not even going to the level of the member of the, the head of the senate and the head of the parliament but just look at the ministerial list how many youths do we have within the ministerial list very few if at all they are there but as a concept is in cameroon since we have defined you as anybody who is mentally sound and mentally active to be a youth you will not really i will technically accept the fact that the youth have been given the opportunities because those who are there they consider themselves as youth but within the general context of who is a youth i will tell you that we are not being given the opportunity okay we have not been given uh, that opportunity um, <coughs> Apostle Ambi of Valentine, uh, let's look at um, youth empowerment scheme in Cameroon. Uh, do you think there is need for a more efficient, uh, better organized uh, structure that caters for um, the empowerment of uh, the youth in Cameroon? Yes. You see, it's not like there is no youth empowerment scheme in Cameroon. Mm. Corruption has killed it. Okay. A lot of young men have written projects taking to different ministries. Those ministries, the individuals in question in those ministries will take those projects, promise the young men heaven and earth, uh, heaven and earth, and then disappear out of the scene. They will take those same projects and put in the name of their family members. 
and then collect money from it not to carry out the project because they are not the initiator of the project they don't have the skill they don't have the intelligence they don't have the ability to make that project a reality but since it's a good project and the government can invest in it they use it behind that project collect their money and it was something very stupid because when somebody initiates an idea it is as a passion the interest in seeing that thing fulfill is more important than even the money behind it so i think they should readjust the way they empower youth in the country people have come up with so many things on ground some have even gone to the extent of starting things with their own private finances and the things have grown to a certain extent government officials have come there observe those things and want to invest but money passes in the hands of all some how do i put it some rogues who will not allow investment to increase in Cameroon as a result of their greed and selfishness. Now, if at all they have to carry out a youth empowerment program, I think that the government in question, this is my answer, and I'm very sincere about it, the government should not be putting the finances of projects that they have approved in the hands of individuals to give. These things are supposed to be done as a show on television. We went on this particular field, we saw this young man investing in producing this product. We have appreciated his skill and as a gesture from the government, like they do in churches, we are giving him the sum of 20 million, like they do when they pray the lotteries, they give on television. Once they give it, the government is planting a seed in the mind of the youth that if you want to also achieve something from the government, then you must come to that standard. That will push every youth now to start working. I, have, I saw a young man who is producing catfish. The young man came and very, from a very humble beginning and began engaging on the product of catfish. Now he makes at least a million francs monthly from catfish. That's a cultivation of catfish. Another person was there doing snails. Those are small businesses that the government was have been pushing the efforts of such individuals to expand in life. The things we think they are too big, they are not too big. Most countries in the world don't make money from the huge industrial products you think. They don't make money from the cars and so far. If the Europeans are strong in technology, Africa is strong in agriculture. Israel was given a land in 1948, an arid land, a barren land, a desert land. Israel took that land, it was like a curse. They do not even have enough water. They ration water to cultivate tomatoes and, 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 and flowers. But it will shock you that in a desert, Israel is the highest producer of tomatoes in the world. Israel is very rich in horticulture. That's the production of flowers. Israel is a nation that measures water to water their crops. Yet we have water scattered all over and we cannot do anything with it. It's to tell you that we do not lack the skill and the resources. We lack the 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 policies. The, uh, okay. yeah, good the policies. Mm -hmm. good the policies to make things work. Mm. Good evening to you, uh Sir James Oben. Summer bless uh K Donat. Uh, good evening to you. Um Humphrey Pride and uh, to you, Doctor Ndua Mbo Nestor Nko Nkaibi Mbaloko. Good evening to you, Ephraim and Te and uh, to you. Um, uh, Swilaru Prus and to you, Eddie Francis Angole. Uh, good evening to you, the Sheriff uh, and K Donat uh, Locomotive FC, Lisa Enondip uh, and Dip Tabe Ebot. Good evening to all of you guys uh, and James C. Asong, uh, Cassie Blanco, Kingsley Ekane, and uh, Milbrick uh, Spencer, Anita Eno uh, Tak. Okay, yeah. Uh, good evening to you, Mbela Bruno Osque Tianaman and Eddie Francis and Gole Vanessa uh, Mazi, Mr. Lum, you are looking good. Uh, good evening to you and Mbu uh, Ivo. And to all of you watching us on uh, social uh, media, I'll take a few messages while we await uh, the speech of the President of the Republic that should be coming up on, uh, in um, on that three minutes at uh, time. This one says, a good evening, Mr. Liu. I fully agree with uh, Mr. Javis. They are people who have the practical skills but don't have the certificate success. Writing from Kribi. Good evening to you guys. I salute Apostle and his point of view. Our academic system is questionable. Lots of students defend innovative projects. And all the university does is award the très bien uh, case close. No follow-up after what Dr. Nick. Okay. Uh, 
Good evening to you. Dan uh, writing from uh, Bonaberry. Uh, good evening, Mr. Leo. Your program is just simply the best. Uh, what Mr. Javis is saying concerning private universities is uh, true. Most private universities will never recruit anyone who does not have a master's or doctor's degree. I think we should not focus uh, so much on certificates, okay? Uh, Frederick watching us uh, from uh, Yawunde. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. Okay, uh, thank you uh, very much. Uh, greetings to you all in the studio. Let uh, Javi stop mixing up things. Can someone teach uh, medical students without being trained? Alain Fabrice is writing from uh, Douala. Uh, this one says, um, Evening to you all out there. Our educational system is very poor. I am 35 years old, studied zoology in the University of Yaoundé. One, I don't have a job. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, okay, let's move over to Yaoundé for the speech of uh, the head of state. Chers jeunes compatriotes, la célébration de la fête de la jeunesse cette année intervient peu après le déroulement réussi de la sixième édition du championnat d'Afrique des Nations de football, Chan Total 2020, que notre pays a eu le privilège d'abriter du 16 janvier au 7 février 2021. Ce fut une belle opportunité de communion avec l'ensemble de la jeunesse sportive africaine et une vitrine pour exposer la vitalité du peuple camerounais. À cette occasion, le Cameroun pays à l'hospitalité légendaire, a su y tenir son rang, grâce notamment à la forte mobilisation de sa jeunesse, dynamique, talentueuse et enthousiaste. En accueillant le champ total 2020, notre pays a pu offrir aux autres jeunes d'Afrique et du monde une belle fête sportive et culturelle, ainsi qu'un agréable moment de divertissement dans le contexte sanitaire plutôt contraignant du moment. Comme on peut le constater, le respect des mesures barrières édictées par le gouvernement et des autres dispositions souhaitées par les organisations du tournoi a permis que la première compétition internationale dans un monde qui lutte contre le coronavirus se déroule de manière convenable au Cameroun, pays de fraternité et de paix. Avec le succès de cette compétition sportive, j'ai envie de dire que l'année 2021 commence sur une note positive pour notre jeunesse. Et je souhaite que cette bouffée d'oxygène ravive durablement l'espoir en chacun d'entre vous. À 
en 2022, un autre rendez-vous est fixé. La Coupe d'Afrique des Nations de football, Cannes Total Cameroun 2021. Je ne doute pas un seul instant que ce sera encore pour vous l'occasion d'exprimer votre dynamisme, votre talent et votre enthousiasme. En dépit d'une conjoncture économique difficile, notre pays s'est bien préparé pour ces deux événements. En effet, nous nous sommes dotés d'infrastructures ultra modernes dont quelques-unes ont été mises en service pour la première fois à l'occasion du chant qui vient de s'achever. Sachons les préserver. La jeunesse sportive du Cameroun, de par ses multiples exploits, mérite bien les sacrifices consentis pour ces grands investissements. Ce doit être un réel motif de fierté pour tous et un encouragement à remporter de nouvelles victoires. C'est le lieu pour moi d'inviter les instances fêtières du football camerounais à se ressaisir et à ramener la sérénité dans leur organisation. Ce n'est qu'ainsi qu'il nous sera possible de créer les meilleures conditions de l'épanouissement constant de notre football. Mes chers jeunes compatriotes, comme je vous l'ai souvent répété, vous ne devez jamais désespérer de votre pays. Vous devez garder foi en l'avenir d'un Cameroun qui gagne et où chacun se met volontiers au service de l'intérêt de tous. Vous devez demeurer à l'avant-garde pour mener les combats vitaux de votre temps. Le dire n'est pas négliger les difficultés auxquelles vous êtes confrontés. Mais, rappelez-vous, il y a deux ans, dans les mêmes circonstances, je vous disais à peu près qu'à chaque génération correspond une mission historique à accomplir pour le devenir de la nation. Il est clair que la vôtre aujourd'hui est en rapport avec la préservation de la paix, de l'unité et de la prospérité de notre pays. Par-delà les contrariétés inéluctables liées aux mutations du monde. La paix est une condition indispensable au progrès. Et comme vous le savez, celle-ci est depuis quelques années menacée dans notre pays par des bandes armées qui sèment la terreur à la frontière ouest de l'extrême nord à certains endroits du nord-ouest et du sud-ouest. Notre frontière est est également sujette à des faits d'insécurité. La jeunesse camerounaise, vaillante et patriote, assure heureusement avec efficacité son rôle de fer de lance dans la défense de la patrie sur ces différents fronts. Avec détermination, professionnalisme et sens élevé du sacrifice, nos jeunes soldats s'activent de manière décisive à ramener la paix. De même, dans le cadre du diptyque armée-nation, les jeunes sont les plus actifs au sein des comités de vigilance qui apportent un appui précieux aux forces de sécurité et de défense. Cette jeunesse qui s'implique et s'engage 
fait la fierté de notre pays. Elle constitue un modèle d'abnégation, de conscience patriotique, de service pour l'intérêt général, de préservation de la souveraineté et de l'unité nationale. Puisse leur exemple vous inspirer dans divers autres domaines de la vie nationale. S'agissant de l'unité nationale, certains d'entre vous ont fait le choix malheureux de faire alliance avec les démons de la haine et de la division. Mûs par un fanatisme barbare, souvent conçu et alimenté depuis des pays étrangers ou par un usage pervers des réseaux sociaux, ils tentent de s'aborder les bases de la nation. Ceux-là sont des antimodèles. Je vous exhorte à vous en éloigner. Ils ne contribuent pas à la construction d'un Cameroun prospère et uni dans sa diversité, un Cameroun exemplaire que nous souhaitons de tous nos voeux. Mes chers et jeunes compatriotes, notre pays vient de parachever la mise en place de ces institutions démocratiques telles que prévues par la Constitution. De nombreux jeunes ont intégré les diverses instances parlementaires, municipales et régionales. C'est de cette manière que se prépare la transition générationnelle dans la gestion des affaires publiques. La propagande politicienne est donc terminée. C'est le temps maintenant de se remettre résolument au travail. Les collectivités territoriales décentralisées constituent une pépinière d'opportunités que je vous invite à saisir. Le gouvernement, pour sa part, va poursuivre ses efforts de développement de l'ensemble du pays. La participation effective des jeunes à la vie socio-économique de la nation restera au cœur de son action. Pour cela, il verra à les impliquer davantage dans la prise des décisions les concernant. Les grandes lignes de la marche de notre pays vers l'émergence à l'horizon 2035 ont été redéfinies dans notre stratégie nationale de développement récemment adoptée. Il convient de s'en imprégner profondément afin de déceler toutes les opportunités qu'elle offre. Mais avant cela, j'avais déjà instruit la mise en place de plusieurs programmes d'accompagnement des jeunes. Ces initiatives sont en cours de réalisation dans plusieurs secteurs productifs. J'invite une fois de plus le gouvernement a fait tout pour que ces programmes connaissent un plein succès. Car de leur mise en œuvre dépend en grande partie la résolution de l'épineux problème de l'emploi des jeunes dans notre pays. Parmi ces programmes, je pourrais citer le plan triennal spécial jeune qui, en 2020, a financé environ 5 500 projets pour un montant global de près de 15 milliards de francs CFA et permis ainsi l'installation d'un peu plus de 16 000 jeunes dans 66 villages pionniers de la deuxième génération. Le programme de promotion de l'emploi décent qui compte atteindre le cap de 500 000 emplois 
créé au titre de l'exercice 2021. Mes chers jeunes compatriotes, la construction nationale est une affaire de tous. Elle exige un esprit de concorde et de tolérance entre les citoyens. Je vous invite donc à cultiver cet esprit en tout temps et à prendre fait et cause pour la paix afin de ne pas gaspiller les opportunités que votre pays met à votre disposition. En tant que composante sociologique majoritaire, mobilisez-vous pour le devenir de votre pays, le Cameroun, un Cameroun stable, uni et prospère. C'est votre précieux héritage. Soyez positif et persévérant. Ne cédez pas au pessimisme et au découragement. Rejetez les chemins aventureux et ceux de la recherche du gain facile. Si vous allez à la conquête du monde, revenez construire votre pays. Faites rayonner le Cameroun à l'instar de vos compatriotes. Le physicien Arsène Stéphane Tema Biwole à la Générale Atomics, le mathématicien et informaticien Tistel Job Vondo, qui vient de soutenir avec brio sa thèse de doctorat à 22 ans. L'écrivain Jaïli Amadou Amal, qui a remporté, comme vous le savez, le prix Goncourt des lycéens 2020. Et bien d'autres que je ne saurais tous citer ici. C'est en agissant ainsi, chers jeunes compatriotes, que vous apporterez efficacement votre contribution à la construction d'un Cameroun fort, uni, démocratique, décentralisé et émergent à l'horizon 2035. Je sais que vous en êtes capable et je compte sur vous. Bonne fête de la jeunesse à chacun de vous. Vive la jeunesse camerounaise, vive le Cameroun. Chers jeunes compatriotes, My dear young compatriots, la célébration de la fête de la jeunesse, the Youth Day celebration this year is taking place shortly after the successful organization of the sixth edition of the Total African Nations Championship, SHAM 2020, which our country had the privilege of hosting from the 16th of January to the 7th of February, 2021. It was an excellent opportunity to commune with all young African sportsmen and women and to showcase the vitality of the Cameroonian people. On that occasion, Cameroon, which is renowned for its legendary hospitality, 
was up to the task, thanks notably to the massive mobilization of its dynamic, talented, and enthusiastic youth. By hosting the total Sham 2020, our country was able to offer other young people from Africa and the world a wonderful sports and cultural festival, as well as a pleasant moment of entertainment within a rather challenging health context. As we can see, compliance with the preventive measures prescribed by the government and with other measures requested by the organizers of the tournament helped to ensure the smooth organization in Cameroon, a country of fraternity and peace, of the first international competition in a world that is grappling with the coronavirus. Given the success of this sporting event, I feel like saying that 2021 is beginning on a positive note for our youth. And I hope that this breath of fresh air will rekindle lasting hope in every one of you. Another event, the African Cup of Nations, Total AFCON Cameroon 2021, will take place in 2022. I have no doubt that it will be another opportunity for you to express your dynamism, talent, and enthusiasm. In spite of the difficult economic situation, our country is well prepared for both events. We have built ultra-modern facilities, some of which were used for the first time during Shan that has just ended. We have to learn to preserve them. On account of their multiple achievements, Cameroon's young sportsmen and women deserve the sacrifices made for these major investments. This should be a genuine motive of pride for all of us and an encouragement to win more victories. I want to call on Cameroonian football governing bodies to pull themselves together and restore order to their organization. It is only in so doing that we can create the best conditions for the sustained development of our football. My dear young compatriots, as I have often told you, you should never lose hope in our country. You should have faith in the future of a winning Cameroon where everyone is willing to work for the general interest. You should remain at the forefront to fight the vital battles of our time. This does not mean that I am overlooking the difficulties you are facing. However, remember two years ago, under the same circumstances, I told you along the same lines that each generation has a historic mission to accomplish for the future of the nation. It is obvious that your mission today is the preservation of the peace, unity, and prosperity 
of our country. Beyond the inescapable constraints due to the changes taking place in the world. Peace is a prerequisite for progress. As you are aware, it has been threatened for a few years now in our country by armed gangs that are spreading terror on the western border of the far north and in some areas in the northwest and southwest. Our eastern border is also facing insecurity. Fortunately, courageous and patriotic Cameroonian youth are effectively playing their role as the driving force in the defense of the fatherland on these different fronts. Our young soldiers are actively engaged with determination, professionalism, and a high sense of sacrifice in restoring peace to our country. Similarly, within the framework of the Army Nation tandem, young people are the most active in vigilante committees which are providing valuable support to the defense and security forces. These dedicated and committed youth are the pride of our country. They are a model of abnegation, service for the common interest, and preservation of national sovereignty and unity. May their example inspire you in various other aspects of national life. Concerning national unity, some of you have unfortunately chosen to rally behind the demons of hatred and division. Driven by barbaric fanaticism, often whipped up and nurtured from foreign countries, or by a perverse use of social media, they try to undermine the foundations of the nation. They are anti-role models. I urge you to stay away from them. They are not contributing to building a prosperous Cameroon that is united in its diversity, an exemplary Cameroon that we all fervently long for. My dear young compatriots, our country has just completed the establishment of its democratic institutions as provided for by the Constitution. Many young people are part of the various parliamentary, municipal, and regional bodies. This is the way the generational transition in the management of public affairs is prepared. Time for politicking is therefore over. It is now time to resolutely get back to work. Regional and local authorities constitute a source of opportunities that I urge you to seize. The government, for its part, will continue its efforts to develop the entire country. The effective participation of young people in the nation's socio-economic life will continue to be at the center of its action. In that connection, it will ensure that they are increasingly involved in decision-making concerning them. 
the broad outlines of our country's progress towards emergence by 2035 have been redefined in our national development strategy adopted recently. It is necessary to fully acquaint yourself with it so as to identify all the opportunities it offers. Prior to that, however, I had already ordered the development of several youth support programs. These initiatives are being implemented in various production sectors. I once more call on the government to work towards ensuring the successful implementation of these programs. The solution of the thorny problem of youth employment in our country depends to a large extent on their implementation. The programs include a special youth three-year plan, which in 2020 financed about 5,500 projects for a total amount of nearly 15 billion CFA francs, thus enabling the settlement of a little more than 16,000 young people in 66 second-generation pioneer villages. The Decent Employment Program, which aims to create 500,000 jobs during the 2021 financial year. My dear young compatriots, nation building is the responsibility of all of us. It requires a spirit of harmony and tolerance among citizens. I therefore urge you to cultivate the spirit at all times and to champion peace in order not to squander the opportunities that your country is offering you. As the majority sociological component, mobilize for the future of your country, Cameroon, a stable, united, and prosperous Cameroon. It is your priceless heritage. Be pragmatic and persevering. Do not yield to pessimism and discouragement. Show an adventurous path and those that seek easy gain. If you embark on the conquest of the world, come back to build your country. Promote Cameroon like your compatriots, namely the physicist Arsène Stéphane Tema Biwole at General Atomics, the mathematician and computer scientist Tister Job Vondo, who has just brilliantly defended his doctorate thesis at the age of 22, the writer Jali Amadou Amal, who, as you know, won the Prix Goncourt de Lycéen 2020, and many others that I cannot name here. My dear young compatriots, it is in so doing that you will effectively contribute to building a strong, united, democratic, decentralized, and emerging Cameroon by 2035. I know you can do it. I count on you. Happy Youth Day to each of you. Long live Cameroonian youth. Long live Cameroon.
Welcome back. Uh, you're watching Prime uh, on my media Prime. That was uh, the 20, uh, 21 New Year uh, no um, youth address uh, to the youth as we celebrate uh, the youth uh, day. Uh, that is expected um, to be celebrated uh, nationwide tomorrow um, in a different way because of the current context, uh, COVID-19 context in which we find ourselves. Um, I'll start with you again, um, Dr. Nick and Wanyam. Yeah, appreciation of this speech. Um, the president was uh, talking to ch to his children, advising them. Yeah, he was talking to his children and advising them, and he would have noticed that his body language this time was not uh, was not very violent, was not aggressive. He was kind of like just giving sound advice. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, what did you pick out uh, from well, him? From what of course, said? he has mentioned. He, he just repackaged a lot of the things that we are all aware of, mm -hmm. and then you know, of course, let's not dwell on football a lot. But he he was talking. He he, he was he was paying attention. To, 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 to youth employment, what, what has been done and what still has to be done for youth to have more work and then he paid a lot of attention on the violence that is going on and he talked a lot about reconciliation and unity in the nation because without peace and unity we are going nowhere. Mm. Um, déjà vu or something new? There was nothing new he brought up except the fact that uh, he challenged most young people to work hard by giving references to some Cameroonians like the Vondo guy in France who defended a doctorate degree at the age of 22 years. I think uh, that was a very important point noted there. To the best of my understanding, he was challenging Cameroonians that there are some things in us bigger than what we are looking for outside. Mm -hmm. Probably you are looking for a job, but there is something in you that can challenge the world, that can turn the world around. In that statement, I can deduce, or I could deduce, that the president practically is telling Cameroonians to look inside of them rather than looking at government offices. Mm -hmm. Yes, he also spoke about a computer mathematician. Uh, I could not keep the name and challenging you through those young men who by their efforts and their talent and their skill they've been able to challenge the global market so i think uh, he's calling cameroonian youth to a place of looking more inside of them than looking for government offices concours and the rest which is what we have been seeing on this platform and then he took up his talk he talked about the a, a three-year youth plan that has been set much has been accomplished and much is yet to be done <coughs> And he also spoke about uh, youth should not allow themselves to be uh, manipulated by foreign intruders to influence them to carry guns and to destroy the peace of the Cameroon because peace is a very fundamental prerequisite for development in any nation. And he laid emphasis on the destability in the country around the east, uh, the Boko Haram in the north and some portions of the northwest and the southwest. Uh, he laid emphasis on that and then he called upon Cameroonians to walk in solidarity, to walk in peace, to walk in unity so that we can build a better Cameroon. He also laid emphasis on the accomplishment of a gigantic sports complex in our country and uh, the, host of the hosting of the, the Chan and um, how Cameroon did so well and he's calling upon them to still put more effort because that is the only way they can get the country properly advanced. I'm sure those are the things I was able to gather from from what he presented. Okay, uh, your take on uh, this end of year? Uh, uh, what? No, not end of year. I don't know why <laughs> I keep talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I was particularly moved by the focus at uh, Feka Food, the football mm -hmm. uh, body, because I he made me to understand that he knows of the trouble, the Rick Marolin, the thunder fighting, or the. The hatred, the bitterness, and he made me to understand that it's he has an understanding about um, the challenges that that we face as far as the uh, um, Division Two, Division One football is concerned. Mm -hmm. And probably because he's been brief as far as the performance of the Lions, Intermediate Lions, is concerned within the just ended chan. Um, I was equally very happy when I heard him mentioning some few names, which is scarce. For him, I uh, think it's rare. Um, I like the Vondo and some few names, and which uh, is scarce. As such, 
an in innovation is a motivation is a motivational factor for others to follow to say that okay maybe uh, next time I should be outstanding so that I could future in the president uh, end of year speech um, but one thing is certain I think um, all that said the question now is what's the way forward um, the way forward I feel and I believe is for the uh, president to push strategy uh, more strategy that will put in place uh, policies that will be friendly for everyone, especially for the youth. Uh, remember that in the job market and in the job creating market, we have a lot of difficulties creating jobs as far as youth is concerned, uh, the, being a youth is concerned in this country. And if we can have policies that will enable uh, persons to create jobs, not in terms of the big jobs, the bigger jobs that we have, but if we can have those uh, smaller jobs that can be created as far as what it takes to open a business as is concerned, the tax-free holiday when you open the business, has that been done? If those uh, institutions or those policies can be put in place, it will help a lot. Above all, if the, 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 the president, I think from the way for, for the way forward, if the president can ensure uh, that um, these infrastructures that we have as in sport are well taken care of, it will reduce spending for upcoming AFCON, which he mentioned, because you remember the CAF Excellence Center, uh, which was created. If you go there now, it's not how it used to be. It means if there's a major event, there will have to be a, re a renovation, and so it's going to drain us much money. So to me, we should put in strategy to do the maintenance already so that we don't spend much for AFCON, because we know how the tradition is in Cameroon. If AFCON is to come for 2022, uh, you get a certain budget as far as that's concerned, maintenance and the rest and the rest. Again, since we already know that AFCON is coming, Maybe we start preparing ahead of time. The, the, the challenges we have, the difficulties we have this time around should not be the same difficulties so we should have to... Um, to, to uh, Dr. Ning Wanyam, I would like all of us to talk about this. Uh, the President of the Republic says every generation has a mission to accomplish. And says this generation has the mission, uh, a mission of uh, peace and unity. Is it a task for this generation or for the other generation? Um... Peace and unity is not limited to any generation. Mm -hmm. Peace and unity is it's it started from you know even from <laughs> from the time of Jesus Christ to mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. If at any time you don't have peace and unity, you are going nowhere. As long as there's chaos, might be this generation now has lots of things to do, but because there's violence and chaos now. You know, first things first. You must get that violence out the window. Mm, and then unite. And, and then unite. And then go about the business of developing yourselves and the nation. Mm. So, in a way, he's saying, yes, but you must start with peace. And you must get that peace. You must unite. You must get that peace. Mm. I, and, and, and without peace, really, you can go nowhere. So, I, I guess that's why where he's going, getting mm. at, mm. you know. And it's not just for this generation. If at any time, if you have peace and it's a given, then of course other things would always surface for you to, 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 to pay attention to. Mm. But the moment the peace is out the window, then everything else takes second or third place and the peace comes to the front. And we must get that peace first. Mm. Okay. Uh, you think that that is uh, the mission that this generation must accomplish to move forward? Uh, my worry is the way he presented it, that this generation is the one that's supposed to bring peace and unity. I don't think is, peace is a sermon. It shouldn't be a sermon preached by the head of state. We have been singing peace procedures, peace strategies, peace processes to be put in place for peace to be attained. No matter how much we preach peace on television, if practical steps are not put on ground, there will be no peace. I think the head of state knows what to do for peace to reign in this country. He shouldn't tell us that it is the responsibility of a generation. There is no generation designed to bring peace. Everybody is in need of peace. And no matter the generation that comes, there will always be a need of peace. I think the present situation or the present dilemma this nation finds itself, it's a very serious issue that the head of state is supposed to know that he's not waiting for a generation to bring peace. He, as the one that has the, the, the yam and knife, should take up the responsibility and engage peace processes in order to restore the peace of the country. 
we have had different challenges in this nation and all those series of challenges have equally asked for peace in 1992 during multi-partism uh, during the, the, the elections there was instability in this country that 1992 was a generation and that generation was looking for peace now we are in 2021 this one looking for peace by the time we clock 2035 it will still be looking for peace there is no generation looking for peace because as long as we have challenges in this country peace is as important as oxygen and the head of state knows actually what is needed for peace to reign right now when i hear him say there are people who are influencing others to carry out activities of rebellion chaos anarchy and pandemonium in the country it surprises me because i think that the head of state practically knows what to do to stop all these activities taking on taking place in this country he has the yam and the knife in his hand there is a way you can broker peace and that peace can easily be achieved if at all you put the processes on ground the truth is that cameroon right now needs communion cameroon needs fellowship cameroon needs dialogue and the head of state knows that these are the things that are needed for peace to return in this country if they throw it in the air that is generation what generation there are about four generations in cameroon right now the 80s to the 2000s is a generation from the 60s to the 80s another generation from the 40s to the 60s another generation which of the generation are they talking about because the generation is 50 years no the youth that's what i'm talking that the responsibility of the the, the peace in this country is not in the hand of the youths is in the hand of the regime in question made of ancient people people of 80 90 60 70 and 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 that, that's the youth generation we are talking about leadership is what brings peace in a country not a group of people in the streets so they should not preach us peace they should engage processes that can bring peace back into this country we are tired of hearing that is this generation that will bring peace what generation what is happening today happened some years ago their generation when they were young this thing occurred in 1979 they were younger then and they were youth they did not bring peace it is in this generation that they are now old the youth of this age will bring peace what fathers didn't solve or what children did not solve should not expect uh, fathers did not solve that children come and solve they should they should they should handle what is what is killing us okay here. um the president went further to uh, celebrate the bravery of um, young persons that are fighting at different levels especially in the military to defend uh, the nation and also working to uh, make sure that peace and that the country uh, stands on its uh, feet uh, Lilaji, he, there's a line he said some of you have chosen to rally behind the demons of hatred in trying to destroy the foundation of the nation uh, the role of the president is to win uh, to uh, lay down strategies to win the heart of the nation and to win the heart of his people i believe that if you look at um, what he said uh there's he has a great point in that in the fact of normally appreciating the military and appreciating the effort of vigilante groups and appreciating the effort of those who are struggling to bring peace in the country but the problem here is that he probably um did not uh, give, uh, you know, an acknowledgement to the Ngabu incident. I was expecting him uh, to equally just talk about effort he has done so far, in, as far as that is concerned, and sympathize with all those who have lost their lives. Because if you are appreciating the military for their efforts, you equally sympathize with those who have lost their lives, as far as the conflict is concerned. Um, there's an issue here, Mr. Liu, that um, I think when we look at where we are today, is because of the foundation of the state and. If we can start celebrating our founding fathers like the Felix Kula Mumi, the Aijo, and all those are the like, I believe that it's going, it's going to be... On a youth day? Uh, not, that, youth day not only youth day. I'm just saying that if we, we, may, we must not put it on youth day. Because we are talking about the foundation. Where is the founding father of the, the first president of independent Cameroon? Where is his corpse? It's in the air. No, we are talking about. So you. I'm just looking at the. No, phone. you are going. You are. You are going. Uh, why do you always take? The, one no, I was just. I, I, I was just looking at. If we are looking about peace, talking about peace, that peace, you don't just win peace. Peace is worked for. There are several elements that bring peace, and this element that brings peace, you, you must. Answer my question, or you are saying what is your mind, uh, uh, Charles? Your question no. is. He appreciated the military and the vigilante groups now. Yes, the guys are working with prisoners. You are talking about uh, former presidents and Roland Mumier. Were they military men? 
no, no, Mr. Liu, you are talking about the, we are talking about the war that's ongoing, and he's appreciating those who are fighting to protect the unity of the nation. And I read a quote from the president, which the quote is that some of you have chosen. <laughs> that is a question I have for. <laughs> so that was what that's I read. What, I, I, I lay my foundation on what I read now. This is not what is in the speech. Refresh me on the question again. Now. No. He, he chose to answer, to grant it to the question I have for you. Okay. My question, is, okay. <laughs> my question is, uh, is that he, he says that um, youths should not engage in hate language. They should not be enticed and moved away from patriotic, a uh, spirit of patriotism and uh, to shun those who have uh, the mission to bring the, the, the nation on its uh, knees and um, those with uh, destructive tendencies. Well, he's right in that score on that uh, point, and uh, it's just been but normal to say, "Look, my children, don't get carried away by you know by negative energies. Mm -hmm. it's, it's okay, it's in order." But the question we should be asking is, why is there negative energy? That's, mm -hmm. the, that's the most important thing. Why is there negative energy? And deal with the root causes of the negative energy. Okay, and and I think if we if we if we were to look at problems squarely and deal with them, we will not be where we are today. Mm -hmm. And we say that a stitch in time saves nine. And the bottom line to get peace is truth. The bottom line to get peace is truth. And uh, you know, truth, respect, and love. So, is there is there at some point where truth went out the window? Is there at some point where respect went out of the window? Is there at some point where love went out of the window? If we don't bring those back, we'll never have peace. Okay, you 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 are saying that um, the nation the nation should uh, tell the young people who are angry against the state that uh, we f we failed in this and that and that and that. No, the 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 the. Point, They're talking about truth. Yeah, the yeah. point the point that we where we are now mm. where we are now. Something started and has been uh, has been degenerating, mm -hmm. and uh, we are we are talking we are talking to a violent youth down the road, okay, down the road, and to to get those things corrected, to get those things corrected. Let me just put in I mean as plain as it is, we have to have a proper, respectful, inclusive dialogue. So we thrash all these things. <laughs> It's very, very important. National dialogue? Yeah, yeah, we need another dialogue. National dialogue? No, 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 national, no, national. No, the president the, is no, addressing no. Cameroonians <laughs> no, no, it's, <laughs> across it's, the border. Yes, yes, it's, 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 yes, it's, it's, I know. It's, it's, it's National Youth Day. I, I know what you mean. Hmm. There's, there's, we need to, the point is, okay, we have violence in the northwest and southwest region. Hmm. We have violence in the north. We have violence in the east. Then it's not because Yaoundé Dwala and the other places are quiet that you think there is, there, is, there, is, there is violence brewing. What kind of violence? As long as youths don't have work, as long as youths cannot make ends meet, they, you, they are already angry. They are angry inside. And, 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 and you know, this, they are a time bomb like we, started with, we, we said. So we need to, you know, go behind the scenes and find out what is going wrong and go in there and treat those diseases treat those diseases and get things back you know it's easy to say okay don't be like this but the question is why are they behaving the way okay. they are doing that's, um, that's the uh, problem uh, um apostle Ambe, the president uh, talked about um the fact that a uh, 15 billion francs cfa has uh, was uh, uh, made available and that uh, cameroonians especially young people have been given opportunities and have uh, received uh, assistance, hoping that uh, this year, 2021, uh, many jobs, many more jobs are going to be created. Do you have the feeling uh, that uh, the amounts uh, stated by the President of the Republic actually reflects uh, what we see as the situation or conditions of the, the young people across the nation?
scared of the government can be singing a choir, a, 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 a chorus down there, thinking that something is coming down there, it ends at the gates. <laughs> now, the 15 billion might have been given by the president, as it reached the youth they are talking about. Because if you want to find out, I think there is a statistics for everything that is done in the country. In other areas, if at all finances were given, that sum was given to help or build capacity in use in this country, then I'm sure there would have been some visible programs to demonstrate on television. Because when they bought us the, um, the laptops mm -hmm. from China that came, it was rumored or it was a song everywhere. And the, 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 the laptops were shown on television. So where did this 15 billion we are talking about, which corridor? <laughs> what are the channels through which this money passed to reach the youth? And would we have some youth to attest that they are beneficiaries to, to the opportunities offered by the government? We need to know because I'm very, very sure that money might have been disbursed. But the challenge is it probably did not reach the appropriate quarter. So we fall back to the place of corruption. The youth are not only suffering because the government does not support. The problem is that the government puts the opportunities of the youths in the hands of corrupted leaders. I think they should re-strategize on how to minister to the needs of the youths. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, everybody's uh, decrying the situation of uh, the youth. But um, in politicking, whatever is happening, it is uh, the young people that are used now to do whatever has to be done. For example, we heard um, somebody like Romudica tell how he used to steal, I'm sure, eight ballot boxes. Uh, we know that um, in politicking and uh, many ventures in Cameroon, uh, there is blackmail, there is uh, smear campaigns against others, and those championing this are the youth. Mr. Liu, you will not blame um, this on the youth in some circumstances because sometimes where you find yourself and you must survive and because of the way the system has been constructed in such a way that uh, most often you are underprivileged and because you're underprivileged you see a certain kind of opportunity you have to do that to survive but again i would tell you this like i said from the beginning that one of the areas in which we the youth we have taken up responsibility is the aspect of beer consumption the aspect of nightclubs and the aspect of uh, doing other things which we feel like we must always blame the government. Yes, the government has a responsibility, but it's difficult to see youth come together, donate money to give, celebrate a friend to open up a business. But it's easy to see youth come together, uh, contribute money, get to a snack bar, spend all the money. It's difficult to see youth come together and do a business shower, but it's easy to see youth go, come together and do baby shower. So in as much as we are blaming the government for responsibility, sometimes let's talk in innovation with the little that we have and see how we can incorporate or bring development or empower one another in as far as that's concerned. When we do that, it will limit the aspect of us carrying bio buses because we can actually survive. But when you ask yourself how many youths can come up together and contribute money and say, hey, take this and start a business. And when you do that business, you can come back, uh, we do that to the next person, we do that to the next person, do that to the next person. It's scarce. So to me, if we can start looking at this, the little that we have, we make use of it while hoping that time goes on, the government bringing policies that will sustain us, it will help us a lot as far as that is concerned. Okay. Um, Dr. Nick, uh, the President of the Republic, is calling on uh, the diaspora, eh? Uh, those uh, Cameroonians who have ventured out there to come back and uh, beautify the nation, invest and uh, help shape this nation towards the right path. That's right, and um, that's what the the Chinese diaspora did. That's what the Indian diaspora did. The Kenyan diaspora. Um, you know, when we're talking about the diaspora, what do we mean? We mean these people, you leave your own nation and you go out to another nation and you acquire skills, you acquire wealth, you acquire something that you can bring back to your own mother nation and help it to grow. And nobody, nobody grows without visiting some other person. To, for you to grow, you must leave your comfort zone and go to some other place and pick up, pick up skills or pick up something from there that you can bring back home. But, you know, so, like someone was saying, we have to 
put in place again those policies and look at what we are doing to encourage the diaspora to come back. You know, for instance, there are so many people abroad who would have loved to come and invest, but there are lots of hitches. One of the hitches, I don't know whether it was Ta who was mentioning it, is this thing of dual nationality. There are many Cameroonians out there who who, who left this country, some on scholarship and some, on, some, some not on scholarships, and they have, they have done so well, and they have the wealth, they have the skills, they want to come and invest, but this is the problem. For them to have survived or gone through the school systems out there, they had to take the nationalities of those countries so they could pay less fees or so they could benefit from some, from some, from, from some facilities. And when you don't give them a Cameroonian nationality to, 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 to come in easily and go out, and you treat them like foreigners, then you are shutting the doors on your own kids, which is not right. So we need for our children to also have this double nationality so that they can come in and uh, come in and do what they have to do and mm -hmm. go out freely. If we are afraid that probably if we give them double nationality, probably there are security challenges, I don't know which ones, but we can start off by giving them residence, residence uh, uh, papers or something so that they don't need to go to the embassy to ask for entry visa into Cameroon. You cannot be coming to your own country and asking for a visa. They should just get jump onto the plane anytime and come home and eat a chew and go back. Yes. Yeah. And uh, we are hoping that peace will come and there will be reconciliation and there will be unity. That is going to come, there's no question. But let us do something to get our diaspora to contribute to our development because there are a lot of brains lying out there, a lot of talent lying out there. There are a lot of industries, secondhand industries lying out there. They could carry these industry, industries and bring home and set them up. And that's another thing that we need to, to do. Take, a, take, take, a, take, take, take stock of, um, uh, get a database of who they are they want to come in, give them land. Gov government should just give them free land and help them to really settle. And, and say, for instance, if you create it and then you employ 50 children or you put 50 children there and you are training, you go for five years, no taxes or something like You get some incentives. We need to sit up. Okay. Uh, the president says never give up on your country. Um, that uh, the, everybody should believe in a winning Cameroon. How do we get everybody uh, to be positive, to think uh, positive and uh, to believe that they can be who they actually were de designed to be in Cameroon. It is the comfort and serenity of every environment that attracts people for settlement. There are so many things that Cameroon has put in place that has become impulsive mm -hmm. for its citizens to come back here and build. I'll give you a simple example. What we call value-added tax in Cameroon is 19.25 for businesses. In Nigeria, value-added tax is 5%. That's the reason why the private sector in Nigeria is boom because why tax does not suffocate the people. Who will leave a country where taxes are very low to come and invest in a country where the government will swallow all the little you work through taxes? The gap between Cameroonian and TVA and the Nigeria is 14.25%. Imagine such a gap. If somebody has then 100,000 in Nigeria as gain, he will pay 5,000 as tax. In Cameroon, you will pay 20,000 as tax. If somebody sits abroad in America and is paying value-added tax for 7%, and then he hears that Cameroon value added tax is 19.25%. Such a policy in taxation can never and ever encourage anybody to leave a place where taxes are very low to come and invest in a place where taxes are very heavy. Funny thing is that French companies in Cameroon do not pay that 19.25. How do you explain that you are a slave in your own father's house? A European with a passport can circulate freely in Cameroon. Why a Cameroonian cannot freely have his own ID card and emblem, which identifies him in his own country? There are policies that if we start vomiting on television, it can even scare the diasporans from coming to invest back in Cameroon. What? What? What do? You, how do you commensurate that gap of 19.25 TVA and five percent neighboring Nigeria here? That's the reason why the private sector in Cameroon is limping. It's not because we don't have, I keep saying that Cameroonians have grown to the extent they can manage businesses for themselves. But the policies on ground will suffocate those businesses in no time. 
the earlier they hear the mouth of this prophet and adjust some of these very exorbitant taxes in this country we will never encourage people from the diaspora coming back when john nanako nanako fado came to power in ghana he said he launched a return to ghana the first thing he did was that he made the tax system very comfortable for foreign investors and then push the government to do everything possible to make sure that people who are coming with great giant dreams should be supported by the government with incentives. How do you explain that somebody is doing salon? I was listening to Ben Ayade recently. He said those taxes for crops, people who are doing farming and harvesting plantains to come and say they should stop those taxes. Taxes were stopped for certain persons and he was crying and saying that he wished he could do more for Nigeria here at Kalama. How do you tell diasporans to come back in a nation where the tax system is very bad? Secondly, we do not accept dual nationality. The Malians, every single Kobo they work in Europe, if a Malian works 10 euro, he sends 9 euro back. He could be a French citizen by identity, but deep in his blood is a Malian. There is that feeling of nostalgia to come back home and develop your fatherland where is the feeling Cameroonians go out of the country they are totally brainwashed language change even their skin they want to change the color because the feeling to come back home is no longer there I think we should start making our people that they are on a transit in any nation they visit give them the joy of coming back home okay give them the joy of coming back home um, unfortunately we have to end at this uh, juncture of uh, the program we are going to be receiving uh, Senator Kemende Henry here tomorrow and uh, some business guys who are going to be joining us uh, on tomorrow's edition of uh, Prime uh, Senator Kemende. Uh, promise that he's going to be here live with us uh, tomorrow. So, um, Chavis, maybe you have one last word for the young people out there. Yeah, my only last word I have is that we should change the phenomenon of party and move it now to contributions to business investment where rather than taking money to go sit in a beer parlor to enjoy we should take that money and look at a friend and say you have this business idea we'll give you this in the next 12 months we'll come and take the investment they they had the money that we give we we, we we gave you and we will give now somebody else so that we'll have more of this money channel to the right purpose than just to be using it in a beer parlor and drinking beer yeah, nice right. parties we should do shower uh, business parties that will give you the money to go and invest mm. dr nick uh, thank you for coming uh, thank you very much uh, i think uh, this should be a turning point for all youths in the country and uh, I, have, I, have, I keep saying that our education has been a huge problem and uh, I just hope that the government will hit an ear to it and, and have us change the education and copy what is happening in South Korea, Malaysia, uh, Singapore and Finland. Because if we don't give our children these skills, they will, they, I mean a few will succeed but the masses will not succeed. It's very important that we teach our children the right thing. And all, all, all of you out there, all youths, please use your phones, use your computers, go to the YouTube and learn. Learn about entrepreneurship, learn how, you, how things work and so on. Give yourself those skills and try as best as you can. Forget about the public service. If you keep running around trying to write a concours, you are doing the wrong thing. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, thank you too for coming, Apostle Lambi. Thank you, Mr. Leo. Thank you, Cameroonians. It's always a joy to be here. God bless you. A better Cameroon for the future. Okay, take the rendezvous tomorrow, 7 p.m. Uh, Senator Henry Kemende, SDF uh, Senator, all the way from Bamenda, is going to be our guest uh, for tomorrow's edition of Prime. Uh, we equally want to say thank you to you, Tamayu Chavis, and to you, Eli Desmond, and uh, everybody who is uh, doing everything possible for my media prime to thrive. Stay blessed. Bye-bye.